Batman issue 146 finds Daniel Capio explain that the Joker did his part in trying to push Bruce to the brink, time and time again with acts like crippling Barbara Gordon, killing Jason Todd, all in an act to bring out Bruce's essential self, the Batman of Zer and R. No matter what Joker did, Batman never would show that side of him again after the initial meeting. Joker soon broke the rules and entered Batman's home, kidnapping Alfred and dosing him with his toxin. As the butler is overcome by the poison, he talks about a plan he has to override Zer's doomsday plan for Batman should he go rogue. Joker eventually did enter Batman's cave, finding access to Failsafe, which he tampered with. Joker told Daniel everything about Failsafe and how Alfred was meant to shut it down in case it was ever activated too early or by mistake. Daniel tells Joker that if Zer created failsafe, then activating the robot early is sure to bring out Zer to try and stop it, possibly causing Zer to take over fully from Bruce and erase his personality. After Alfred died, Daniel knew the time was right, so Joker targeted Penguin, doing everything he can in his life to make it a living hell so he would become cornered and exhausted. Joker then came to Oswald with a plan, telling him to fake his death and frame Batman for the murder, giving him a chance to start over. Daniel knows that, that if there was ever an example of Batman slipping up, then the Penguin was his best candidate. He was never one of the top shelf rogues and never had complicated plans, and he didn't have the know-how to concoct a drug that would simulate death and convince even Batman himself that he was dead. Penguin didn't fully believe Joker's pill would work and would actually kill him, but Daniel knows that he likes his playthings to live, and everyone lives simply because he hasn't decided to kill them yet. Daniel remembers his training of Bruce, seeing the danger in him back then and how he was actually open to the world before his paranoia set in, which made him susceptible. Daniel asks Bruce if he knew he was there, in the deep recesses of his mind, as back when Zer hunted down the Joker and broke his back, Joker manages to say a special trigger word that Daniel embedded in Batman's mind back when Bruce trained with him, one that confuses Batman briefly. Daniel reveals that the word wasn't some control word that Joker thought it was, but a command that would ensure Daniel was kept safe. Zer found the captured Daniel, freeing him from jail and installing him as the Warden of Blackgate Prison, which Zer doesn't want to use as punishment, but more like rehabilitation, and who better to help them than the man who can rewrite the human brain. The tied up Bruce knows that he isn't planning on making the world a safer place, since he's a detached narcissistic nihilist who's never cared about people, only observing them from on high, and he's really there for the game. Daniel doesn't deny any of this, wanting to experience it all firsthand. He wants Bruce to be taken back to his cell to think about what he has done with his life, since he doesn't want to cause him any more trauma. Out in Gotham, Zer and Robin battle Killer Croc, with Robin being allowed to take down the villain all on his own. Zer grabs Waylon and plans on bringing him in while Robin scopes out the next hideout, but Stephanie confronts Damien, telling him that this being isn't Batman and he needs to know that. Robin thinks that they all held his father back for so many years and now he's finally doing what he is meant to be doing, and none of them can accept that. Stephanie tells him that Batman created fearing criminals, so can Damien really see his father doing that to everyone in the city? Sir tells her that he can accept fear if it means the people are safe and the family isn't going to goad him into a fight, since it's just a waste of everybody's time. Zero and Robin leave Stephanie as in the clock tower, Barbara and Dick talk with Superman, Flash and Wonder Woman, telling them that Bruce has been struggling with his backup personality Zero and R lately, so they are certain he is influencing Bruce's decisions to inhabit a failsafe body. Barbara asks Flash what they should do and Barry thinks that it sounds like Zer is just operating on Batman's code. At least he's not using guns or killing people, so right now he's just more of Batman than they used to. Wonder Woman believes that this being is accelerating Batman's war on crime by arresting more criminals. Barbara knows that she is right since he's taken over Blackgate and fortified it, booking criminals into the prison along with their evidence, almost like he's a cop and he's even going so far as to set trial dates for them all months in advance. She knows that the mayor wants him stopped and Montoya is just observing, and Dick knows that while they have gone against the law before, this time is different since with the power of failsafe, Bruce has them all beat, so if he crosses the line, how do they stop him? In Blackgate Prison, Bruce listens to Joker's rhymes about him, thinking of a way to escape with only the real obstacle being the mini failsafes. Bruce figures that if Zer made them, then maybe his memory is still buried in his mind somewhere, and with the being gone from his mind and in the failsafe body, he should be able to access that memory without triggering Zer. Bruce pushes deep into his mind, finding a memory of Zer constructing the failsafe robots. 
giving him a good look at their designs. With the knowledge on how to defeat them, Bruce rips a pipe from the wall and finds that he'll need some patience and wait for Zer to drop off another prisoner. His time soon comes as the drones arrive with Punchline and Bruce covers the cell with smoke from his prosthetic hand, causing the drones to come and investigate. Bruce catches the drone off guard, smashing it to bits as the other comes for him. Punchline is confused since if Batman is there fighting the robots, who's the other Batman? Joker finds Punchline lamenting how he missed her and the woman tries to free him, but Joker doesn't want to escape, he wants to have some fun first. Harley Quinn meanwhile calls for Bud and Lou, asking if the hyenas want some ice cream, but when they don't answer and she goes to look for them, she finds them passed out from tranquilizers on her bed. Zer suddenly smashes through the window, grabbing Harley and telling her that she wasn't going to go unpunished. Harley reminds the being that she is practically a Justice Leaguer and even a proper hero, just like Batman said. Zer knows that that was in the past, but now justice has come for Gotham. Robin is unsure if this is the right way to do things, but doesn't say anything as Bruce destroys the final robot in the prison, getting ready to find his way out. Punchline, however, throws a switch and releases the criminals inside the cells around him. Bruce knows that these aren't powered criminals as they are kept upstairs. These are just the tough ones and there are only 76 of them and he's good with those odds. He gets ready for a fight but before it can come, more drones arrive attacking the criminals. In the chaos, Batman slips out unseen, although Vandal Savage catches wind on Batman's disappearance and gives chase. Bruce heads to the main ventilation shaft but before he can enter the hatch, a human guard demands that he freeze. Batman is shocked that he stayed and the guard knows that there are still prisoners there and they need to be looked after, so he can't just leave them. Batman gets that that's his job, hoping the guard knows who he is and he's the real deal and he's going to stop this madness. The guard lowers his gun as Batman assures him it'll all be okay. As Vandal hides in the shadows and watches Bruce escape, Bruce heads to the roof and dives off the building, not wanting to risk contacting any of his friends since Zer has plans to destroy them all and he has access to everything. Everything except for Bruce Wayne. The news meanwhile reports on the new Batman apprehending Killer Croc along with a record number of fugitives, but the city is still divided on what to do about him. Robin listens, telling himself that the people are always divided when others actually try to help them. Robin goes to find Zer, but finds his newest pet project instead, a half-completed Amazobot. Zer arrives and tells Robin that it's an Amazo 3.0 robot that he got with a few others, planning on using them to help truly stop crime, since to do that, they'll need an army, and they will lead them together as father and son, and no one will die. Vandal meanwhile kills the guard in Blackgate and escapes the same way Batman did. Zer becomes alerted to the riot in Blackgate, contacting the Warden. Daniel assures him that it's all under control, but Bruce Wayne is missing. Bruce meanwhile makes it to the city from the river as Zer notices a red light on his console, telling Daniel and Robin that he has someone to meet. Manicano meanwhile deals with the fallout of the riot, wanting to send in the military since he can't let a tyrant vigilante run rampant. His assistant tells him that Vandal Savage also managed to escape the prison and Chris knows that this is the man the billionaires were backing, meaning it's finally happening. Elsewhere, Superman meets with Zer, figuring that since he came, he has Batman's memories of at least where they first met. Zer knows that this was the Phantom Zone case and he's not just Batman, he's also Clark's friend Bruce. Clark wants to know what happened to his friend and how uploading his consciousness into failsafe is even possible. Zer knows that it's a lot to take in, but this was always his failsafe for his aging body and Clark could never understand with his invulnerable skin and ageless power. Superman asks if Blackgate was also part of the plan and Zer hopes that Superman can hear the press conference that's happening right at this moment. Vandal meanwhile talks to the press and Zer knows that he's on the verge of being anointed the new police commissioner of Gotham City and it's all being orchestrated by the people in the shadows pulling the strings, like there always is in Gotham. He knows that people are going to die unless he is at his best, so there will be no more crimes or suffering since after all, isn't that the dream? Superman wants to know what the cost of this dream is since if he goes too far, he will stop him. Zer tells Superman that he will fail because he's Batman and Batman always wins. Zer leaves Superman as elsewhere in the city, Bruce disguises himself and steals a car, speeding out of Gotham and away from Zer and R. 